Mr. Pehard and my um, colleague Adnan Yilmaz. And, and we have four guest speakers who will be doing most of the presentation actually today. Adnan and I uh, will uh, make an introduction um, into social justice and social justice language education and we'll introduce our social justice Niati project that we carried out um, between, well, since 2018. Um, and then we'll have our project participants, um, Gizam, Kadir, Gökçe, and Fahri here to talk about their own social responsibility um, projects. So to begin with, we would like to talk about how we um, conceptualize social justice and social justice language education in this project. So social justice educate social justice for us is a philosophy and approach and actions that embody treating all people with fairness, respect, dignity and generosity. Um, social justice is an individual, collective and institutional journey. It includes self identity awareness, um, learning with students, um, and probably learning with and from students and developing meaningful relationships, um, developing multicultural, multilingual um, knowledge, challenging racism and other um, biases, and having a critical stance and working with a community of critical um, friends. And when we come to social justice language education, we describe it uh, as a noun and also as a verb. So as a noun, social justice language education includes equity, ethical values, care and respect, and you can also add a bunch of other um, values um, here, like diversity, inclusion, and, and so on. But it also has to be a verb. So social justice language education, um, you know, in, it, it needs to embody a process and a, and, and a goal, because you, otherwise you can't talk about all these values, but you know, it won't, it won't make a difference. Uh, so to, to bring those two aspects together, social justice language education in our definition uh, refers to the process of creating equitable and inclusive schooling and education by examining issues such as race, diversity, age, ability, gender, and sexual identity from a critical perspective while also cultivating a sense of empowerment and social change. Um, so when we think about social justice language education, it involves pretty much everything um, that is involved in the teaching learning processes, um, such as our beliefs, values, ideologies, um, curriculum, language learning policies, um, teaching approaches, methods, techniques, and um, um, textbooks um, and various other multi-modal materials the questions that we ask in the classroom uh, and the decisions that we make and as well as the interaction patterns we have in the classroom and our relationship with um, students and, and our advocacy for students, parents, colleagues and committees. So this is, uh, this is how we conceptualize social justice and social justice language education. Uh, Adnan will continue with the social justice in the LT project that we did in, in Turkey. Thank you, Denise. So um, basically our social justice in ALT project has three basic, um, two basic uh, objectives. So first, it focuses on integrating social justice issues in English language teaching curricula by educating preservers teachers in Turkey. And it also aims to help um, preservers English language teachers run uh, small scale social responsibility um, projects in their local environment to reduce social injustice and increase um, equality and socioeconomically disadvantaged areas in Turkey. So these are the basic um, objectives of our, of our project. So our project includes uh, different stages. Um, so we started with an e uh, seminar. So we visited different universities in Turkey and we introduced our project and we recruited um, preservers English language teachers from these universities. So basically we visited um, four universities. Um, after recruiting our participants, we had the, um, some webinars. So our preservers teachers went through a kind of training on social justice and language education. Um, so our um, webinars focused on environmental education and justice, gender equality, LGBTQ plus inclusive pedagogy, and immigration and peacebuilding. 
So completing the um, training phase of the project, we moved on to uh, holding a workshop. Um, so here in this workshop, um, we had a nice discussion with our preservers and exchange teachers, and we discussed the potential social responsibility project to frame their um, social responsibility projects. And then our participants carried out their um, social responsibility projects. So um, I'm going to leave the floor to our um, guest speakers, our preservers and teachers. So they're going to present their projects. Let's leave this floor to Bobby, our first presenter. Hello everyone, I'm Farah and this is my project, Virtual Short Story Library for PLT Teachers. Uh, before beginning, I, I would like to say, at that time I was a senior year student in Hamas University. And let's start with the two main motivations behind my project. The first one is low rate of reading as a habit in Turkey. We don't like reading books in Turkey. We don't have a reading habit. We don't even read newspaper, magazines, or other stuff, and that's a really big problem. The other motivation is limited knowledge of social justice in Turkey. We don't know what social justice, what does it mean, what does it have in it, what are the social justice issues. <coughs> and my objectives were to, to help students acquire the habit of reading, to raise awareness of students and teachers about social justice issues, and to create a fully functional virtual short story library. My participants and the context of my project. Uh, firstly, my participants. My participants for, were four <coughs> junior year ELT department students from Amas University and Eskişehir Osman Gazi University. And I want to say something, as I said in the beginning, we don't know what is social justice. And the participant recruitment was quite challenging because the first question they were asking was, what's social justice? What are we gonna do in this project? And the context, raising awareness of the students about social justice issues with our webinars, and integrating their newly acquired knowledge with their writing skills about social justice issues. And the process, how we did it. We have five stages, participant recruitment, webinars about social justice issues, story writing, proofreading, editing and finishing the stories, and creating the library. As I said before, participant recruitment was quite challenging and the webinars about social justice issues. The webinars were to inform the students about these problems, like what are these environmental problems? What does it mean gender equality? Or who are these LGBTQ plus communities? Or how does it feel to being an immigrant in different country? And after the webinars, our participants start to write their stories down. And in this stage, we did quiet meetings to see how the process is going and what can we do to improve their stories. And when the story writing is over, I did proofreading, editing, and finishing their stories together with them, and then creating the online library. In our end product, we have three short stories with their lesson plans and activities for the elementary school level. And the first one is Self Loving Colors and Black. It's about, it's about a black crayon and it takes place in an imaginary crayon world where crayons can speak or move or go to school. The second one is The Most Beautiful Flower. It's about a boy whose name is Fahri. Uh, one day his teacher <laughs> wants him to bring the most beautiful flower he saw in the nature and the story goes on. The last one is Migratory Triangles. It's about a community of triangles who had to migrate because of their problems in their hometown. My gains, uh, my personal gains are, I was a part, I'm a part of a church community. And I can say that before the project, I had a limited knowledge of social justice too. And with this project, I acquired more knowledge of social justice and also I saw the different aspects of the social justice. And my professional gains are, I developed my project management skill because this was my first big project and the other one is I improved my proofreading and editing story skills I had to read so much paper to do that and that's all for my project actually from now on my friend Kurtje will present his project
Hello, my name is Gülte Çiçekçem. Uh, during the project, I was in English language teaching department. I was a student in Karadeniz Technical University. Uh, now I am an English language teacher in a private course in Trabzon, Turkey. Uh, my project focuses on teaching 21st century learning skills through LGBTQ plus inclusive pedagogies. Uh, I believe, in my opinion, uh, education should include all youth, LGBTQ plus community, and those young people should uh, see themselves reflected in what they learn. And also, future teachers, future teachers should adapt themselves to the changing world. Uh, they shouldn't follow the traditional steps. Uh, and then I, uh, my objectives are divided into three groups, social justice goals, language learning and teaching goals, and then 21st century outcomes. Uh, because of the pandemic uh, 2020, in 2020, uh, I carried out my project virtually online. Uh, I had eight students, eight undergraduate students. They were in, uh, in ELT department in Snop University. They were volunteers in my project. And also they were featured ELT teachers. That's why I studied with them. Uh, my objectives, uh, because of the main topic of the project, I wanted the students have a better understanding towards LGBTQ plus community. Uh, and then in each meeting, I wanted the students focus on a basic language learning and teaching goals because I wanted them to see how easily they could uh, implement those lessons into their own teachings. And then at uh, 21st century outcomes, in order to combine all of them, I wanted the meetings should focus on a basic uh, outcomes, collaboration, communication, critical thinking and creativity. Uh, how was the process? At first, uh, I wanted to conduct a survey. Uh, the survey had three subtitles, uh, men and women equality, interacting with LGBTQ plus members, and we used towards LGBTQ plus community, in that I can see the students' perceptions. In the first meeting, uh, I focused on collaboration. Uh, we learned the terminologies about LGBTQ plus community. And then we had a uh, the students had a photo college about those terminologies. In the second meeting, I focused on communication. Uh, in that, uh, we uh, we had a short story about two penguins. And then uh, the after the sections, the students created their own font poetry about this story. In the third meeting, uh, the focus was on critical thinking. Uh, we talked about the members of this community, and after the section, the students uh, watched a movie, Love, Simon. Uh, the students uh, either recorded a video or um, wrote a text about how they would feel if they were in the shoes of Simon. In the fourth meeting, uh, it was about creativity. Uh, we created an anti-solar policy towards bullying of LGBTQ plus community and the students wrote a letter of application to their <coughs> department's chair, Adnan teacher. And uh, after each meeting, the students kept journals about what they learned, how they felt during the meetings. And at the end, they recorded testimonies about how they felt during the full process. Let me show you one of the testimonies. The project was highly beneficial in terms of getting to know about LGBTQ community. Not only did I learn the right terms to address them, but also got a chance to empathize myself with them so that I could at least try to understand the struggles they face. So one day when I become a teacher, I want to share the same information with my students and raise awareness and also create a kind, respectful and safe environment for the students who belong to the same community in my own classroom. And after testimonies, I conducted the same survey with the first one in order to see the differences between students' thoughts. Uh, the end product, uh, at first I posted uh, the whole process the whole process into our uh, YouTube channel as a video and then I created a booklet and I posted in our uh, blog. Uh, it includes our lesson plans, slides, students' words, all of them. Uh, what are my gains? Uh, at first I wanted this 
uh, ideological view of the project in my whole life. I wanted to carry on this in my teaching side. And also, uh, I know we can easily count on the necessary things in education, like we should do this, we should do that, but it's important to start from somewhere. And also, uh, we have great influence towards the students, so I think we should use them uh, because they are ready and open to the new things. Thank you. Now it's time for question. Hello everyone, I am Kadir Anapala. I was a senior undergraduate student at Atatürk University while doing this project. So my project is called Dyslexia. It is basically applying the social justice concept of dyslexia, but I changed the name because the, the, this it mean, it means poor or inadequate in dyslexia, so it is not acceptable something being poor in social justice. So I did not accept it. So I thought that if the, if I want to overcome this problem, I have to, I do not I if I think as an I I cannot overcome. If I think as a you I cannot overcome or them no. But if we come together and become we, so that we come overcome we can overcome with this problem. So it is called as called as dyslexia. So the motivation behind this project, uh, first of all, my personal interest. So when I was an undergraduate student, the special education needs students took my attention. So I wanted to work on in this field. And then I did some research about the statistics. First, the Turkish statistics and then the world statistics show me that there's a significant number of dyslexic students in ELT. So I, have, I, should, I thought that I should help them. And the last motivation is the opportunity to reach target students. What I mean is that, like everyone has dreams, like you, we want to some, do something, but you can, you cannot have the power. But this project show me that I really, I really have the power to the, to help those dyslexic students. So the objectives are first increase the awareness on dyslexia and dyslexic students in ELT content and offer some solutions to ensure social justice for those students. And the last one is transform local studies into global studies that I will explain later. My participants and context. My participants were the senior students of ELT department of Trabzon and Atatürk University. And as I was an undergraduate student, I needed a specialist in this field. Uh, so. He helped me to do, to do some seminars and last participants are the global teachers, students and anyone interested in dyslexia. So the context was raising awareness of the senior students about injustice regarding dyslexia and spreading the awareness of dyslexia globally and sharing knowledge and experience towards the teachers and students. So the process, my project is basically in two steps. First, the seminars for pre-service ELT teachers. My first destination was Trabzon University, and second destination was Atatürk University. The specialist Nafi Özmen and I, we did some uh, seminars to raise awareness for those pre-service teachers. Maybe the pictures are small, but you can see the, see the seminars. And the last picture, the front uh, shows the, some posters and cards prepared by, by those participants and the second part of my project is reaching out to masses so I thought that I did some I did two seminars it was like a 40 uh, my participants were like 40 peer service teachers senior students the number was not enough so I thought I had to reach to the others even not in the church but globally so I decided to create a website called dyslexianyati.com so my end product, workshop products prepared by the senior students after seminars and they are exhibited in the ELT departments. The website, dyslexianelt.com, it contains information about dyslexia, methods and teaching techniques for teachers, classroom materials, and activities for dyslexic students. And by the way, my website was active uh, for, uh, up to now, but I decided to add some section like some teachers around, uh, around, uh, around everywhere 
they send me some messages about using the example materials or sharing experiences with me. But the only the only thing was that I was seeing those messages, not the other ones. So I decided to add a add a new section to my website. It, it can be thought as a Facebook, but on my website that you can create some profiles and without reaching me, you can uh, talk with each other, share experiences and share some materials or techniques so that you, you do not have to reach to me directly and you can talk with each other. So my website will be active again in one or two days with the new section. So if you visit, I'll be, I'll appreciate it. And then online platform where all teachers uh, in the, around the world can contact with me to give me some suggestions, as I said, and make use of the material techniques and methods. So my gains. So personal gains, I had some uh, more knowledge on dyslexia. So I improved my social skills and I developed skills on interactive verbs and I increased my research ability and I developed my empathy skills as professional gains. So I improved my presentation skills. Actually, I, I understand the work environment, like work, like teaching something to dyslexic students in ELT content can be a problem. Can be seen as a problem by some ELT teachers, ELT lecturers, so that they do not want to teach those students. So, unfortunately, it's something that it's, it's not good. But I, 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 I understand the work environment. And lastly, I learned that being a team member is something good, how to be a team member. And now I'll pass the floor to Gizem, the presenter. Gizem, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Gizem Malta. Uh, I was last grade a student while I was carrying out my project, and now I'm a high school English teacher. Uh, let me start with the motivation um, to participate in this project. As a human being sharing this world with other creatures, I have observed so many injustices going on. However, little is done to handle these injustices. Uh, I think education is the key to solve this problem. So why don't we integrate these uh, issues into education, especially in language classroom? So when I heard that uh, <coughs> seminar of this project, I thought I must be in this project. And this project aimed to foster high school students' awareness and the uh, understanding of the concept of social justice while developing their writing skills. So I tried to integrate social justice issues into writing skills. And to make it more specific, this project focused on uh, developing students' understanding and awareness of the concept of social justice to Im uh, improving students' writing skills with particular focus on narrative genre and help students integrate social justice issues when writing narrative essays. And as for the uh, participants, I had five uh, volunteer high school students and aged 17 and 18 and had an intermediate level of English. And as for the process, uh, it started uh, with the uh, recruitment of the students. I had uh, help from I received help from my high school teacher to recruit my project students and after the recruitment phase I had pre-interview with the students to see what they know about the concept of social justice, whether they had any instructions on the concept um, during their education in school and what they think about the integration of such topics in the EFL writing class. And after the pre-interview we had teaching phase. Um, uh, in the teaching phase, uh, we had four uh, major stages. Uh, it started with the teaching outline and introducing the, introducing the narrative essays. Students have received five week-long instructions on so learning social justice issues. We did various tasks, various tasks and uh, activities uh, throughout the project. Students have written essays on the topics of racism, and discrimination, environmental issues, poverty, and gender inequality. After that, we had a post-interview uh, to see what, how, how my students' notions have evolved throughout the project. And as for the end products, we have lesson plans and materials, my and students' blog, blog pages, a booklet, and uh, as outlines and essays. 
and students animated videos based on their essays. Uh, let's watch a part of their animated videos. Tepede Gülen won a great composition contest but came off to stage crying. Tears of happiness? I don't think so. It feels bad because of her headscarf. Ben de Stephen, she was only 11 years old but everyone judged her due to her religion. She was a student in an emotive secondary school. The contest was in Kozan in 2007. Even if she didn't get the prize that time, after 8 years from Miss Ima, she could reach the award. The, this is one of their animated videos. You can watch all other students' animated videos on my YouTube channel. And while watching, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs> and involved a lot to, uh, per both personally and professionally throughout the project and I would like to thank uh, everyone who gave me the chance to be here. Thank you. Oh, this is, I think, um, the, um, yeah, this is our uh, website, um, socialjusticeminiati.com um, and um, you can find all the, the materials and, and presentations um, and resources um, there. Um, I believe this is the end of our uh, presentation. I think I forgot to mention that this was a project uh, funded by the U.S. Embassy the, um, um, in Ankara, um, State Department. So we'd like to um, thank um, you know, everyone and, and um, David um, for you know supporting us um, since um, day one, and also Roger in the later. Um, <laughs> questions? I have a question. Um, one of the other things that you can't help uh, but recognize that you learned that you took away is uh, the ability to be creative and. Uh, inject new content into a curriculum that does not have this content. And the question that was asked this morning at the social justice session was, what about pushback from parents or administrators or other teachers? How did you experience that? If so, how did you deal with it? Um, do you, if you didn't experience it, do you anticipate this uh, being an issue um, as you hopefully go on to wonderful careers in English teaching and continue using this important content. Um, actually, uh, teachers, I like to talk about teachers and uh, my colleagues during work, uh, they told me how can you uh, implement that project because it's LGBTQ plus community and uh, they are so sensitive about those 